chapter 16, beginning verse 23. Beginning in verse 23. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God, and to rejoice, for they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry. Did you catch that first part? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And when it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that failed, held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may learn their lean thereupon. Now the house was full of men and women, and all of the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may once avenge of the Philistines for my two eyes. Just a few minutes this morning, I want to just, just use the subject of, O Lord, remember me. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we love you and thank you. God, we thank you for the testimonies that's here. Lord, thank you for everything that you've done, everything that you're doing. Lord, thank you for your presence that's in this place, that, that's been in this place. And Lord, we ask this morning that the remainder of this service will be to glorify you, to lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, that, that there will be an anointing of the Holy Ghost that will fill this house, Lord, and, and preach the word the way that you want it preached, Lord, the very word that you want spoken. I ask that the Holy Ghost will come and deliver that this morning. Father, meet you every need this morning in this house. Lord, there's one sick, if there's one weak, if there's one away from you, Father, draw near, heal, save, and deliver, and set free, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this prayer. Lord, be lifted up and glorified in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Very familiar section of scripture dealing with Samson. And we all know that Samson was a mighty man, a strong man. We know that he, he was victorious in battle. He, he slew many men with just a jawbone. We know Samson did many great things, but Samson, being the man that he was, fell into a moment of weakness. He was also strong, but he was weak in a sense because he had that one point that we all could find out that, that why the scripture would say that, that no weapon formed against you shall yeah. prosper. See, it didn't, the Bible didn't say that no weapon pulled off of the shelf will prosper, but right. no weapon formed against you shall prosper. See, it's formed because the enemy watches you. The enemy puts his eyes on you. The enemy watches how you act, how you talk, where you go, what you do, when you come and where you go. And he watches for a weakness. And when he finds that weakness, then he begins to fashion that weapon to, to attack you at that place of your weakness. But the Bible says not even that weapon shall prosper against you. Not even the weapon that the enemy has looked and specialized just with your name on it. Just for you. He's got a spear He's got something with your name on it that he has fashioned, but even that spear will not bring you down. Nothing that he has fashioned is going to hurt you is what the Bible says. But Samson's weak point was women. Yes. Yes. Amen. Samson ended up with Delilah. And Delilah because money. Amen. She was offered a great sum of money to anybody that could bind Samson. So Samson came into her and she laid the sweet talk on. And I don't understand how how this would even come into play, Brother Webber. She she says, "What is it, Samson, that, that could take away your power? Yeah. What is it that could bind you?" Mm -hmm. Samson said, it's "Just some new rope or some yeah. some cords from a bow." And those were both tried, and he went out and, and popped. They didn't work. So one more time, he goes in and lays down. She says, lay your head down on my, on my lap. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you a few questions. And as he's laying his head down on her lap, she said, oh, Samson, I thought you loved me. I thought that you said you loved me so much, but yet you won't even tell me the truth. What is it, Samson, that will take away your power? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, he didn't go into detail, but he said, me and God, we got a covenant. Mm -hmm. And part of that covenant was I wasn't supposed to cut my hair. So if you'll cut my hair, 
then I'll lose my power. Samson went to sleep in the lap of the end. Right. And as he was sleeping, she called for a man to come in and begin to shave his head. And as the hair was taken from his head, the power was taken from his body. And he, she woke him up and said, the Philistines are outside. Come and go outside. Fight them. Defeat them once again. And he just said, oh, don't worry about it. I'll do the same thing that I've done every time. I'll go outside and shake myself. And everything will be all right. But if you back up like two verses from where I started reading, the Bible says this, that the Lord had already departed from Samson. Yes. He did not know it. But the Lord had already departed from Samson. That is a bad place to be. When you think you got everything together. When you think that you got everything under control. But yet God has taken a step back. And, and let you see. Can you handle it on your own? Sometimes I believe God will do that. If you think you can handle it on your own. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If you think you can handle it without me. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to run away. But I'm just going to take a step back. I'm going to pull my hand away for just a minute. And let you see just how things go when I'm not there. Oh, Brother Weber, so the times we live in today, there's there, there's so many, I, I, I was talking to you earlier, one thing that I do not want to be a part of is status quo church. I do not want to right. be in, in, into anything that's called church that you come in and we already know how it's going to end before it ever gets started. Right. I'm not wanting that. I'm not yeah. looking for that. Right. I'm not looking for three points in a poem. I'm not looking for, for more chaos. I'm not looking for everything that's going in, in, in such an uproar. I'm looking for God's order to be in place. I'm looking yeah. for God to be in charge. Yeah. I'm looking for the Holy Ghost to move. I'm looking for souls to get saved. I'm looking yeah. for bodies Get here. I'm looking for God to be in charge and to do that we can't just live like we lived when we was in the world and figure out that I can just shake myself when it comes time I can right. do what I want on Saturday but on Sunday I'll shake myself and I'll go into the church and I'll and everything will be alright but the time's going to come brother Tom, what do you say my spirit shall not always strive man. Yes. Right. sooner or later he's going to let us see what it's like without him yeah. and I don't want to be in a position to be yeah. without God yeah. I don't ever want to get in that position where God pulls back and he, he holds his mercy back or he pulls his grace back and he withdraws from us. I don't ever want to be in that place. I don't want to ever be in that position where they said that they hung the word Ichabod above the door because the Spirit of God had already left that place. Oh, but church, we have so much to look forward to. We have so much to be thankful for. We have a God who will never leave you nor forsake you. We have a God who's, who's impossible, doesn't even mention his name in it. He, he's nothing that he can't do. There's nothing that God can't accomplish. There's not a soul he can't save. There's not a body he can't heal. You've heard the testimony already this morning. They said, you might be coming out of the hospital. Where are you now? You're sitting in church this morning lifting up hands and praises to God because he did what they said couldn't be done. That's the same God that you served this morning. That's the same God whether it's health problems or whether it's spiritual problems whether it's family problems. You can still call on that same God and watch what that same God is willing to do for you. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He didn't know that God had left him. Brother Joey, until he walked outside. Yeah. Now see, he's still a strong man. You can understand. Because part of what they put him through was they put him in brass fetters and put him to a grinding wheel yes. and made him push that grinding wheel. Oh, yeah. And he was still a strong man. They said, bring him from the prison house. Let him make sport for us. Yeah. Show feats of strength. They pulled his eyes out. He didn't even oh, see where he was going. Mm. He's just being made fun of, being poked at by the enemy. Yeah. But even in the midst of all of this, he came to his senses one day and he just looked up and he said, Oh Lord, remember me. Yes. Remember me, Lord. Yes. Oh, just remember me one more time, Lord. Glory. Oh, I remember another man that said those words, That's Brother right. Weber, hanging on a cross next to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was hanging there and as one thief would make fun of him on the other yeah. side. If you're really the Son of God, then take yourself and us off of these things. If you're really the Son of God, then set yourself free. Take us with you. But others said, why are you mocking this man? For he has not done anything. But he looked at me and he says, when you come into your kingdom, would you remember me? Yes. I love him. Yes. Oh, and Jesus looked right back at him. <laughs> I can't imagine this because when I get a hangnail, I want to sit down and cry. <laughs> but this man on a cross, <coughs> suffering and dying, 
looks over at Jesus and he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Uh -huh. Lord, nails through his arms, nails through his feet, crown of thorns on his head, no skin left on his back where he's been whipped. And he looks at him and he says, today, yes, sir. today, yes, sir. thou shalt be with me in paradise. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today. Sister Drina, he could have called 10,000 right. angels. Yeah, that's yeah. right. He could have just said, Father, I can't do this. But instead, he looked next to him and he said, Today. That's right. Today you shall be with me in paradise. Oh, what did that signify? Not only is your victory coming, but it's coming soon. This is not meant to last forever. This torment is not to last you forever. This is not the trial that's going to keep you hanging up here for a long time. All of this that you're going through right now shall pass. It will go away. It will end in victory because today, like Jesus told the thief, today you shall be with me in paradise. Amen. Today. God's plan. God's plan for the church. You remember in 1 Samuel chapter 3 when Eli, the priest, the Bible says his eyes was growing dim and he was growing older. And Samuel was there with him and Samuel heard this voice call him. So he went into Eli and he said, Eli, did you call me? He said, no, that wasn't me. Go back to sleep. So he went back out and he heard the voice again, Samuel. Because something was going on at the time that God had to prepare. See, Eli's eyes were growing dim and he lay down to sleep. But one thing that he was supposed to do was to keep that candle burning all the time. Keep that lamp burning all the time. And that lamp began to flicker. The oil began to run kind of low. And the Bible says, and ere the lamp of God went out. Oh, but let me give you good news. The word air does not mean, oh no. That's right. The word air means before. Yes. God said, before. I let that lamp go out. I'm going to call Samuel to come and tend this lamp. Yes. Brother Weber, before I believe, I believe before God will let the fires of Pentecost dwindle out. I believe before God will let the fires yes. of holiness dwindle out. I believe that before God will let the fires of the truth dwindle out. Before God will let the church just dwindle and be nothing. God will raise up a generation. God will raise up a people. God will send forth a people who's hungry for the will of God. Who's wanting something that's not just what we're supposed to want. What we're not supposed to expect. But Brother Stoddard, I believe God's going to send people forth that's hungry for a move of God. That, that wants that more than anything. The ones that will answer them say, Jesus said, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. This, they shall be filled. They yeah. shall be filled. Oh, and he said, if we would call out, if we would cry out to him, that he would answer. He would hear us and he would show us great and mighty things that we don't know. I don't know if I, how you feel, but I'm not ready for just another another day. I'm ready for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I'm ready for a move of God. I'm ready for things to, to change the universe. I'm ready for change to things, to change this country, to change our state, to change our city, to change everywhere that we are. I'm ready for it to change to the point so that there's like an electricity in the air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. If God can show up in a temple as a cloud, yes. Amen. And his glory would be so real that he would have to separate a man from it. Yeah. Right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes Lord. If we earnestly seek God's face and That's his right. presence. Right. I'm not saying that he'll fill this room with a cloud. 
But the Bible does let us know that he will fill it with his presence. Yes. Yes. He will yes. fill it with the Holy Ghost. Yes. He will yes. fill it with his grace, yes. with his mercy. Yes. He will yes. still reach down to those who are downtrodden. Yes. He will yes. still lift those up who are hurting. He will still yes. show yes. up and be God in our midst. If it's, if it's not visual, if, if it's, some people say you can't feel God. Well, I feel God right now. Yes. I, feel, I feel him in this place already this morning. Yes. I know that he's here and I know that he's being God. He's still God everywhere that he goes and I know He's not ashamed to come forward, and he's not ashamed to meet with us. Are we ashamed to meet with him? That's right. Well, I, I see sometimes when it's easy to be on fire for God when we're in the church. Yes. But when we're in the job, and the foul language starts, can we still be on fire for God then? Can we still speak up for God there? Yes. What is it? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Can I tell you what that did not say? Blessed are the weak, for they shall be the doorsteps of the world. Right. That's right. Didn't say that. You know what meek really means in my, in my version? Power uh, under control. That's yeah, right. That's right. Absolutely. Hallelujah. You realize that if the president woke up one morning, turned that key and uncovered that red button and mashed it, what would happen to the world? There is that power, but it is under control. Oh, yes. Do you know what would happen if one day the church woke up, <laughs> rolled over, and uncovered the power of the Holy Ghost? Begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Yes. Begin to call out on his name. Lord. Begin to cry out to him. Lord, it's not what I want, but it's what you want. Yes. Lord, in the name of Jesus, draw them near. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bring this country back to you. Have another yes. outpouring. Have another movement. Lord, remember us. Yes. Yes. Down through time, down through the pages of that old book that I carry around back here. Time after time, Brother Earl, I see people who get to the point where they just look up and they say, Oh, God, just remember me. Just remember me. But I see another page where God says, I never forgot you. Right. Hallelujah. I never forgot you. I never will. I never will turn my back on you. Brother Earl, Samson died that day. While the enemy was having a party to their God. There's another portion of scripture that Dagon, their God, if y'all remember back to this passage, where the Ark of the Covenant was brought into the temple where they got set. Mm -hmm. And when they went in the next day, there's the, the statue of Dagon laying on the ground. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Ark of the Covenant still sitting there. They begin to question, who did he knock him down, pick him back up, and sit him back in his rightful place? So they came back the next day, and looked. not only was the statue of Dagon laying on the floor, but his head was falling That's off. Right. And his hands were falling off. Yeah. It's just the bust of him was laying there. Yeah. And they said, you got to get this thing out of here. You got to get this Ark of the Covenant out of here. You got to get this. This The God of Israel is destroying everything that we have mm -hmm. desired. Yeah. Yeah. Show them that's what God's place will do. Yeah. That's what God's holiness will do. Yeah. That's what God's That's presence right. will do Amen. in the midst of a people who will call out to Him. Yeah. Put Him in His rightful place. Yes. Right. Everything that doesn't measure up to Him has got to go. That's right. right. Yes. It has to go. How did it go? <coughs> he said that at the end of that, He killed more people that day than He had in the battles all of His life. Yeah. There's a massive victory coming to the church. Yes. Yeah. There's a massive victory coming to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Maybe we can't be a Samson. Maybe we're not going to stand between the pillars of a temple and push the pillars to and collapse a building on top of the enemy. Maybe we're not going to do that. But church, when you open up that Bible, oh, yes. and you begin to read those scriptures, Word. and you consume that word, 
until that word consumes you. Yes. And it starts getting within you. Oh, and it yeah. starts growing within you. And something oh, begins to change. You get to that past point where, where not everybody says what, what they thought that their version of holiness was, was how you dress. Or, or that I think I might have told you this. I had a, a young man ask me one time, is it okay if I go get a tattoo, Brother Steve? I said, well, first, I'm not your dad. I can't answer that question for your house. But I can't answer this because this is what it sounds like you're asking me. Is it okay if I get as close to the world as I can and still be saved? I said, it sounds to me like you won't make me to make you a list of things that you can do that's worldly, but still be saved. I said, Here's my suggestion. You get a relationship with God, yes. and the Holy Ghost will let you know these things. That's right. right. Brother Jody, it's all about this simple. If we'll get in our rightful place with God, yes, right. if we'll get in that place where he's calling us to be and stay in that place, then everything that we have need of, he'll provide. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. He'll answer prayers. He'll be there in the dark of night. He'll come to you when you call on his name. He won't just leave you. He won't yeah, leave you right. speechless when right. you end up yeah. against the enemy and the enemy is facing you down and you're standing there going like, well, I don't really know what to do. No, you'll back up and you'll go like this. I've seen this before. Yeah. Let me tell you the Lord in the name of Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You start just saying it. What's that old song you said? Oh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Yes. Oh, they go on to say what? Through many dangers, toils, and Yes. I have already come. Yes. Yes. I have already come. For you. If he brought you this far, he's going to take you off Amen. Amen. If he brought you through the trial before, he'll bring you through it again. Yes. If he stood between you and the enemy before, he'll stand there again. Yes. He'll give you the victory. He'll give you the victory if we'll get to that place in our life where we say, oh Lord, I might have not have done everything the way that you want me to do it. I might have messed up and I might have made the wrong decision. But Lord, today, would you remember me? Yes, hallelujah. Remember me, Lord. Would you stand with me?